Western Washington University in Bellingham, Washington, USA. I'm here to do a presentation on the Jehovah's Witnesses on uh, sexual abuse and, and, and point out a prominent article that came out a couple of years ago. I think this was actually last year from the Atlantic Monthly. 2019. Called the Secret Database of Child Abuse. This is an article that came out in a prestigious publication, but in the past few years, there have been many, many reports that have come out that have said something similar, uh, very often in tabloid publications, a secret database about child molestation. Uh, back a couple of years ago as well, uh, the BBC and other major news outlets took up this story, and so there's been a a meme that circulated in the media for a number of years now that the Jehovah's Witness organization is maintaining a secret database that protects pedophiles. I feel this is very unfortunate. I feel that there's an awful lot uh, that is very deliberately misleading, um, and I'd like to be able to address some of that in my presentation today. So we have here, the Daily Telegraph has done the same. It's copied other news reports. And it's in fact, at the moment, carrying an advert on YouTube, encouraging people to, that a paid advert to get people to watch this. And it's not substantiated. It's a report based on other reports. Let's listen to her continue about the allegation that Jehovah's Witnesses are a closed society. It's in the aggregate. With all of these studies, we see encouragement and collusion with anti-cult associations uh, where the information is being conveyed to the government, where the studies are being proposed at the suggestion of uh, anti-JW activists. Um, I've, I've mentioned the issues in, in terms of the the Dutch study especially in terms of their intake procedures for complaints, but in, in none of these studies has there been any questions about credibility of information. Um, the similarities across the reports themselves are really sort of very surprising. I'm somebody who teaches college writing, and there's, there's so much textual similarity from one study to the other. It looks very much like a cut and paste situation. My first response when I was reading the, the Belgian and the Dutch report sort of, you know, almost sort of synoptically is, you know, if a student, if two students had handed me these, these two documents saying they had written them, I would have said, oh my gosh, you know, who is vulnerable for an academic honesty issue? Uh, because there is very, very much, you know, it's just sort of simply kind of lifting of information, which suggests at the, at the very best, you know, sort of communication or cross-fertilization, or one could also maybe say collusion. Um, there's a deliberate negative framing in all of these pieces, and so all of these, all of these reports make a very similar argument. And it's important to realize that all of these reports devote much more of their textual attention to, to a description of the Jehovah's Witness organization that's very detractory. And that, issue, that information actually is a larger piece of the content in these reports than, than the actual addressing of complaints themselves. Uh, there's a persistent accusation that the Jehovah's Witnesses are a quote unquote closed society. And I feel that this is inaccurate in two ways. It's inaccurate about quote-unquote closed groups, and it's inaccurate about the Jehovah's Witnesses as closed. Um, closed groups is a typology. It's a, a sort of a generic descriptor. It's a, it's a sociological paradigm, which many sociologists think is, is overdrawn. Um, and it's never meant to substitute or, or be something that could sort of predict or explain how a, a religious group is going to sort of conduct itself. Um, you pretty much invariably see at the personal level permeability, even groups that have strong social boundaries. And then I would also propose that it's inaccurate to think of the Jehovah's Witnesses as a group that has across the board strong social boundaries. Uh, there are clearly families and individuals who are much more tightly within the, 
the social network of the Jehovah's Witness organization, but I've had many friends uh, who are JWs. I've gone out for hamburgers with people. I've drunk beer with people. I I think you you cannot assume that the JWs don't have regular dealings with the outside world. These are people who have businesses, who are active in society. And, and to sort of think about them as a group of people who are, you know, living in some type of bunker where they're, they're not able to communicate with the world, I just don't think that that's actually an accurate framing. Um, the other thing I think that needs to be said is the causality between religion and sexual abuse is not clear. Uh, these reports assume that strong beliefs code with higher abuse. Uh, but this is based on stereotypes and it overlooks the fact that abuse is endemic in modern society. It overlooks the fact that religions have the potential to prevent abuse through pastoral interventions. If you see something that's weird, you might warn a family, you know, maybe you don't want to date that guy, that kind of situation. Um, it's also known that conservative religions very often separate genders, keeping girls away from boys uh, or away from men and keeping children away from casual acquaintances. And so in those senses, the strong social boundaries and, and sort of social roles of a, of a religious organization like the Jehovah's Witnesses might actually drive down the, the, the possibility of sexual abuse. And then it's important also to realize, again, that most religious abuse happens through opportunities. The Jehovah's Witnesses do not have children's programming, and so they have fewer occasions for abuse within a religious setting.